Amen. Amen. Who better to go to than the creator for advice? Next, we're going to have Sister Danielle Gibson from Emmanuel Church of God in Christ. She graduated from the University of Illinois with a bachelor's degree and continued to Keeler Graduate School of Management for her master's. She's currently working in human resources for an architecture firm. But above all, though, she's serving the Lord. We thank you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. We give honor to the shepherd of this house. Amen. I give honor to my pastor who is not here and my mother who is here. Amen. Amen. Philippians 4, 11 through 12. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am what therewith to be content. I know both to be abased and I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. A pastor who was visiting a fourth grade Sunday school class began talking about marriage. In his introduction, he asked the class, what does God say about marriage? Immediately, the boy shot up his hand and replied, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I would like to talk to you for a moment on the topic, joy in the journey. Why are you not married yet? Are you dating someone? You're getting older. It's time for you to settle down soon. What a nice, what's a nice girl like you doing unmarried? I'm praying the Lord will lead you to a good guy. These are all questions singles get asked more times than we can count. So much in our society is structured around couples. It's often just assumed that adults will have a partner, and that's rather odd about something if they don't have it for a long period of time. Single people can be made to feel like spare parts in their families, social groups, and churches. Singleness can feel like the participation trophy in the game of life, the gift that no one asks for. Growing up in a culture that idealizes romantic love, not many of us start our adult lives desiring singleness. No, our desires fly over the other way towards passionate love, towards marriage, towards the idea of finally meeting the one. Books, movies, TV shows, and our peers, they all have unspoken assumptions around those things. And sometimes our expectations from our family and even our churches make us feel like we are incomplete, like we are lacking something when we don't have that one person or we won't have ultimate joy or satisfaction if we are single. The truth of the matter is, singleness is something we all must experience through this journey of life. Some people's journey of singleness may last longer than others, but this does not mean that something is wrong with you as a person if you are still in the, single, in the season of singleness. The world's view of singleness is all about pleasing oneself. While the Bible tells us that singleness is not for self, but for service. When studying for this sermon, I found it hard to talk about singles, singleness. I found it hard because my immediate thoughts were selfish. I thought about the struggles of singleness. And when I asked a few people that I knew what their first thoughts were, they, their responses were loneliness, painful, boring, and being thought forgotten by God. But singleness starts to feel more like a burden or a badge that marks us as the rejects, the ones left on the shelter. We start to wonder, what is wrong with us? We worry, are we missing out on something? We struggle to find the joy in our singleness. We resent the married people who try to encourage us to be contently single. We say to ourselves, what right do they have to lecture us? These are the privileged ones who have what we want. So there's no way they could understand what we feel, right? Wrong. Singleness is not a disease for which the only cure is marriage. In our scripture, Paul encouraged us 
to be content in any situation we face in life. Paul was content because he could see life from God's point of view. He wasn't focused on what he was supposed to do or what others felt he was supposed to do, but he did what he knew that God told him to, to do. To truly find joy, you must change your perspective, your priorities, and figure out who your true source is, which is the Lord. God will always supply our needs, but in the way that he knows is best for us. You see, in my own life, I have wrestled with singleness, and, and my singleness in particular. But God has brought me to a place for which I can say singleness is indeed a blessing, and it's not a curse. There is truly joy in singleness. In the Bible, 1 Corinthians 7 and 32 says, But I would not have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried cared for the things that belong to the Lord and how he may please the Lord. So what pleases the Lord, one might ask? Spending time with the Lord, studying his word, offering up our service to those in need, serving in our communities and local churches, obeying God's commandments, praying for another, one another. But these are just a few things that please the Lord. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Having faith in God includes faith in his timing. Sometimes we are in a rush to marry and we end up selling for someone that was never meant for us. So what does it mean to find joy in the journey of singleness? Finding joy can be whatever you need it to be. It can be a time filled with self-discovery, personal growth, the opportunity to fully focus on God and serving God and enjoying life. While, of course, it is natural to desire companionship and romantic love, but it is also important to remember that singleness is not the state of lacking or waiting for something better. Instead, it's an opportunity to embrace the unique blessing and freedoms that come with being single. One key aspect of finding joy in singleness is shifting your perspective from viewing it as a waiting period, but to a season of growth and fulfillment. Take time to focus on self-care, personal goals, travel and see the world, invest in meaningful relationships with friends and family. Another important aspect of finding contentment and singleness is cultivating the deep and, re- and meaningful relationship with God. This can be done through prayer, meditation, studying his word. During this time, you want to draw closer to God and allow a deeper understanding of his purpose and his plan for your life. You know, singleness can bring a sense of peace and contentment, and it transcends through that relationship with God. You can't have a relationship with someone else if you do not. I have a relationship with your maker. We serve a jealous God. Amen. Amen. He wants all your time. He wants your heart. He doesn't want you to just be handing it out to somebody else and you haven't seeked him first. Amen. Continue to seek God and to trust him. When we focus heavy on what we don't have and the discontentment, it could possibly produce a host of choice choices that could potentially lead to daily failure. God's word tells us in Proverbs 3 and 5 to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not into our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. This scripture is so key in our life because it shows us that God knows our hearts. He knows what we desire. He hears us when we pray. And if we trust in his timing, he will bless us with our heart's desires as long as they align with his will for our lives. Sometimes God is saving us from our lifetime of heartache and pain. When I started this message, I talked about my view of singleness and how it was from a selfish perspective. But through my journey, I have learned to find joy in the journey. There is joy in being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it and not have to consider somebody else's feelings. There's joy in being able to travel the world and manage my time the way that I want to do it. There is joy in being able to spend un selfish time with the Lord and to do things to help my church and my family. While I do desire marriage, I'm not spending my time moping around, viewing my single, my season of singleness as a curse. I firmly believe that the Lord in his timing, he will remember me. Ask me why. Because in Genesis 30 and 22, God remembered Rachel and opened up her womb. In Exodus 2 and 
2 and 24, God remembered his covenant with Abram, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And in Genesis 8 and 1, God remembered Noah and every living thing. In Psalms 98 and 3, God remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. And in Samuel 1, verses 1, chapter 1 and 19, God remembered Hannah and he will remember you. You don't have to ask God about keeping his promise. If he said it, he will do it. So wherever you are along your journey, whether it be single, married, widowed, divorced, still figuring it out, you can still find joy in your journey. And you just have to remember that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Amen. I'm reminded of Matthew 6 and 33, excuse me. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So while we want marriage and spouses, what I heard Sister Gibson say is as we continue to seek God and trust him, those things will come. Next, we're going to have, you know what? I'm excited about young people. As a young single person myself, I'm excited about young people. Next, we're going to have from Bethel Gospel Tabernacle, Minister Jonathan Flowers. He's a recently graduated from Southland College Prep in Richland Park. He will attend North Central University in Minnesota this fall. And we are excited for what the Lord has given him to give to us. Well, uh, praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> uh, well, uh, as you know, I'm Jonathan. I uh, bring greetings from Bethel Gospel Tabernacle, uh, where my parents, uh, Pastor Mel and Sherry Flowers, are pastors. Uh, I'd like to give uh, honor to Pastor Perquette. Thank you for allowing me to speak here. Uh, <laughs> Um, in uh, Judges chapter 16, verse 15, this is a story of Samson. And uh, at this point of the story, uh, Delilah is begging him for the secret of his strength. And it says, and she said unto him, how canst thou say, I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me with uh, these three times, and has not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. He told her all his heart and said unto her, There have not come a razor upon mine head, for thine had been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and like any other man. And when Delilah saw that, he told, he told her all his heart. She sent and called for the Lord's and uh, other Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the Lord's of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in her hand. And she made him sleep upon her, her knees. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out at, uh, as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord departed, was departed from him. Uh, but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And did he grind in the prison house? Well, the title of my message is to stay focused. In the story, as I just read, Samson wanted, only wanted Delilah because of her appearance. But he didn't focus on what was on the inside, which was who she was as a person. And that's what the devil will try to do. He will try to distract us to get us off track and hinder us from what God wants us to do. 
And once you fall for the distractions of the devil, he will try to keep you distraction. I mean, distracted. Whether the distraction is TV, video games, uh, even food, people. Uh, as single people, there are many ways we can be distracted, especially um, us men, we can be distracted by women and women vice versa. Um, but I came, but uh, oh goodness. Uh, we shouldn't be focused, well, as younger, as younger people, that's a lot of older people in here. So. <laughs> well, for us younger people, uh, <laughs> Uh, we uh, shouldn't be uh, too focused on relationships. We should really be focused on our relationship with God. I know that uh, I know some young people around my age, they try being in relationships and end up getting their heart broken and uh, things like that. But that's also another way the devil uh, tries to distract us as uh, young people. He'll try to take advantage uh, of the, the hurt and that pain. And... Uh, uh, in 2 Timothy 2 and 22, it says, Flee from youthful lusts, but also follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. There are young men and women my age getting themselves into relationships, hurting themselves, and uh, because of that hurt, they do different things. They uh, try to coat the pain with different piercings and tattoos and uh, even drugs and things like that. Uh, but the devil tries to, uh, and he also targets the youth, especially because um, he tries to scatter the youth. So it will be harder to build us up. A famous quote from Fergus Douglas, he said, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And, but now, nowadays, the devil tries to target us, especially as the youth, so... Uh, children at a young age aren't going to be able to be built up. But uh, that's why the, uh, having godly parents are yes. most definitely important because they will build you up in the word of God so you can have a strong foundation. Yes. Uh, let me see. <laughs> but um, even though the devil tries to uh, distract you, um, he tries to kick away the pieces to build you up by distracting you, but God sent me to tell you that uh, to young people, well, yeah, <laughs> young people, okay, uh, to stay focused, not be distracted, but stay focused. Uh, in Romans 12 and 2, it says not to be, uh, and not be, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may pray, prove what the, is good and acceptable and perfect yeah. will of God. Uh, for those uh, singles uh, looking to be married, um, self-control, as uh, Sister Johnson was saying, uh, self-control is very important. Uh, especially uh, do not fornicate. Uh, if, for those who don't know, fornication is uh, sex without, outside of marriage. Um, know ye that uh, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth with, is without the body, but he that committed fornication. Sentence against his own body. Uh, for single people looking towards marriage, make sure you look, uh, make sure that person is seriously single. Uh, make sure they're sanctified. Um, use discernment because, you know, you got men dressing up as women and women dressing up as, but yeah, come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a lot going on. Uh, uh, but um, men, make sure you look for that Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, women, look for a man uh, with qualities, uh, faithfulness, righteousness, courage, protector. You know, uh, make sure you know he has good values. Make sure he values the God. Um, 
And women, don't chase the man. Don't chase. Uh, let the man come to you. <laughs> And uh, for people who for people who are uh, married out there, make sure y'all communicate. Uh, there's a lot of people that get in uh, marriage and they end up falling off because uh, of arguments and things down the road. But communication is very important. Uh, it helps you uh, build and, and use corrective criticism. Don't break each other down. <laughs> uh, but build each other up. Uh, but no matter our relationship status, whether we're single, married, widow, even divorced, as believers in Christ, we are singled out from the world, but it's still in relationship with the Lord. And our gracious focus should be on our relationship with God. Thank you.